It's the week of April 6, 2021. My name is Arthur. And I am Inyaki. Welcome to your Winter Wells News. About two weeks ago, a 200,000-ton cargo ship got stuck sideways in the Suez Canal. The canal is a shortcut that many ships use when sending goods and materials to different parts of the world. The ship contained millions of dollars worth products that were headed to destinations all over the world. The Suez Canal is located in Egypt and allows ships to not have to travel all the way around Africa to reach its destination. The temporary blockage disrupted the world trade for almost a week and will likely result in several lawsuits. Last Tuesday, the cargo ship was freed and sent to port to be checked out. The ship that got stuck is nearly a quarter mile long and it's currently being looked at for damage to the boat that might have occurred as it was stuck. The Egyptian government said last week that the ships waiting to get through the canal should be cleared within about three days of becoming free. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey signed a bill last month, Monday declaring a state holiday in honor of the Navajo code talkers who used their language to transmit code messages during the World, world War II. The holiday will occur August 14th. Each year begins next year. It's wonderful to have a state of Arizona honor and recognize the sacrifice and contribute of the Navajo code talkers. Navajo Nation President John Nathan Nez said the, in a press release, it's a long overdue. We only have a few Navajo code talkers with us today, to this day, but we pay tribute to all of them and their families. Their legacy is strength with today's signing of this bill, and we hope that this will also help to share the stories of our code talkers so many more people throughout the state are aware of everything that they gave us for our country. Now let's head over to Mr. Bourne with a weekly update. Hello winners well, this is Mr. Bourne and today I'm very excited to talk about Fast Forward and some incentives that we are putting in place for the remainder of the year with Fast Forward. Uh, so students, you know Fast Forward. We actually carve out time every day so you can use this uh, program. Parents, this may be new to you, but Fast Forward is one of the computer programs we use. There's a lot of research behind it uh, that shows that it does have impact on learning. Um, and the way it affects the brain and gets kids uh, ready to, to achieve success in reading and other academic areas. So it's something that we know has good research behind it. We know that it does work with kids. And so we use Fast Forward every day to help um, our students learn. The program is setting up some incentives and we at Winners Well are also setting up some uh, incentives, some fun contests for the remainder of the year. Uh, we make it easy for you because we put it in your schedule so you'll be doing fast forward. But students who achieve um, high participation, completion, and attendance, there are some opportunities to win a prize as a class, but also to win some individual rewards. So starting April 1st and going through May 8th, uh, we are going to be providing a couple of school incentives. So students who get a 95% or more in all three areas, which is completion, attendance, and participation, uh, will receive a popsicle on Fridays to go with their lunch. And for the class in each grade level that uh, meets that same criteria, uh, the highest for that month will also have a class popsicle party. Uh, so a couple things to try to work for as you're continuing to learn and continuing to um, focus on getting to that finish line. Uh, a couple of fun things that we want to put into place. So please, guys, continue your fast forward and, and try to complete it, participate, and be here to do it. Thank you, Mr. Bourne. Now let's go over to Mrs. Williams with the Counseling Corner.
Hello Saddle Mountain, this is Mrs. Williams with a message from the Counseling Corner. This month's theme is generosity. Generosity means the quality of being kind and generous. I'm feeling very excited by the generosity of the staff here at Saddle Mountain because they have made me feel welcomed. Being generous is a part of being kind. I'm a kid at Hope leader and I promote kindness every day. So please help me by showing others generosity. This month we are celebrating Earth Day. How awesome. Our earth could really use some love right now. So, some, um, some ways that you could take care of our earth this week is to pick up any trash we see on the ground and put in the trash or the recycling bins. Remember to wash your hands after. Let's give some love back to our earth so that it can heal itself. I hope we are all being safe, staying healthy, and being the best we can be. Remember, all children are capable of success. No exceptions. Have a great week. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Now, here's Natalia with sports. Welcome to sports. My name is Natalia. The Arizona Diamondbacks finished spring training last week with a game against the Cincinnati Reds. They will need to get some run support this, this season to help out with solid training pitching rotation. The analysts are not expecting much from the Diamondbacks this year because of the lack of spring training scoring. The Coyotes have been playing much better lately, including a current three-game win streak against the Ducks and the Sharks. Phil Kessel, Kessel picked up his first hat trick as a Coyote in a 4-0 four, four shutout for third-string goalie. Adding Hill, the Suns are 7-3 and three in their last game. 10 in their last 10 games. They are now 31 and 14, still in second place in the West behind only the Utah Jazz. They still have about a third of their schedule left to play. Of three makeup games that were canceled back in January that still need to be played. That's all for sports, see you next time. Thanks Natalia, now let's go over to Isaac and Natalie with entertainment news. Welcome to Entertainment News. I am Isaac. And I am Natalie. Colorful hot air balloons and kites as large as semi-trailers will fill the sky over Goodview for the 10th annual Arizona Balloon Classic. It all starts on April 30th and goes until Sunday, May 2nd, the socially distanced outdoor event scheduled for 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday and 6 a.m. to noon Sunday at Goodyear Ballpark. It will feature family-friendly shows and activities. New this year in the Desert Wind Kite Festival, Sunday admission is free for everyone. Advanced sales for Friday and Saturday tickets purchase, purchased online at abcfest.com are $20 for ages 13 and older and $10 for ages 55 and older and $5 per ticket if purchased at the gate. Active duty military veterans and ages 12 and younger are admitted free, free each day. Parking will be $5 per vehicle. Pets are not allowed at the event, and all activities are dependent on weather conditions, organizers said. In the event of cancellation, rain checks to other balloon events will be offered in lieu of refunds. See you next time with more entertainment news. Thanks, guys. Let's head over of, to Joke of the Week with with Natalie and Safira. Hello, and welcome to Joke of the Week. My name is Safira. And I'm Natalie. Today's joke is why did the M&Ms go to school? I don't know. Why did the M&Ms go to school? They want to be smarties. Great, great joke, Safira. If you have a joke and would like to tell it on the news, please go to you, I mean, S m-u-s-d dot me slash beyond the news and we would love to have you on see you next time on joke of the week peace thanks girls now let's go over to rosalie with fun fact trivia welcome to fun fact trivia my name is rosalie april 6th is national caramel popcorn day no one is quite sure why it is celebrated this day but it is still very popular snack that people enjoy all over the world. 
Back in early 1800s, popcorn makers began combining popcorn, peanuts, and molasses to make a sweet, salty snack that was very popular. The sweet treat became popular at baseball games. And by the 1893 World's Fair, no one, one brand in particular, Cracker Jack, Jack, became a household name. Today's question is, what year was the famous song Take Me Out to the Ball Game written that mentions all the famous caramel corn snack? Is it A, 1899, B, 1903, or is it C, 1908? You have 10 seconds to make your decision. If you said C, 1908, you are correct. However, the two guys that wrote the song had never even been to a baseball game before. Also, the song wouldn't get played at a real baseball game until 26 years after it was written. When it was played at the 13, 1934 World Series. See you next time on Fun Fact Trip. Thank you, Rosalie. Now let's ho head over to Isaac and Safira with this week of history. Welcome to this week in history. My name is Isaac. And my name is Safira. On this day, April 6, 1896, the Olympic Games, a long lost tradition of ancient Greece, were born in Athens 1,500 years after being banned. At the opening of the Athens game, King Georgios, the first of Greece, and a crowd of 60,000 spectators welcomed athletes from 13 nations to the international competition. There were 280 participants from 13 nations completed in 43 events covering track and field, swimming, gymnastics, cycling, wrestling, weightlifting, fencing, shooting, and tennis. All these competitors were men, and a few of these entrants were tourists who stumbled up the games and were allowing to sign up, allowed to sign up. The track and field events were held at the Panathenic Stadium, which was originally built in 330 BC and restored for the 1896 games, Americans won 9 out of 12 of these events. The 1896 Olympics also featured the first marathon competition. That, that is all for this week in history. Bye. Thanks guys, now it's science time with Joshua. <laughs> Welcome to science time, my name is Joshua. The wildlife world zoo has been in the news a lot lately. This time, it's for bringing a white male rhino from the San Diego Zoo. Their goal is to bring compl in completely new bloodlines to improve the genetic diversity for managing populations of the species. And the zoo said in a press release as a part of the dedication to the rhino conservation, Wildlife World Zoo has been consulting researching and planning the new breeding program to fight against the extinction of the species. The program is part of the zoo's rhino facility that opened in early 2018. This breeding program has been nearly de a decade in the making it, and it feels great to know that everybody's hard work has finally paid off. Chrissy Morcom, Wildlife World Zoo Director, of media relationships says in the release we are all so excited to be entering the next phase which is welcoming baby rhinos that will become the front runners in saving their species 20 years ago there was about 500,000 wild rhinos the current estimate have the world population rhinos down to about 29,000. See you next week with some more science time. Thanks, Joshua. Now let's head over with Manly of Word of the Week. Welcome to Word of the Week. My name is Manly. This week's word is critique. Critique is a noun and it means a detailed evaluation. Here is how you can use it in a sentence. The students all turned in a rough draft of their essay, so the 
teacher could give them a critique of their work. That is all for Word of the Week. See you next time. Thank you, Melanie. That's all for this week and no, for this episode of Winter Wells News. See you next week.